not going very well. Uh, we've already moved uh, Salty Lass and the storm is just starting. Um, but we've already got problems with our resources. Now those are things like water. We haven't been to uh, a water tap for absolutely ages. Um, light. We rely on light um, for electricity. So, you know, we haven't got very much of that. Um, storage for rubbish. Um, you saw us cutting up uh, bottles in a previous episode. So we're making sure that we're doing that so that we're not storing as much rubbish. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff that we just have to be careful with. Um, it's not a case of just sort of like doing what the heck you like. You have to manage the resources you have, be it water, electricity, or just storage for general junk. Well, it's an awful day. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely foul out there. The, uh, the weather is um, absolutely crazy. So what we're having to do is manage our power expectations and our data expectations. Um, I put this laptop on, laptop on charge yesterday when I had loads of sunshine. It's fully charged up so I can get a couple of hours work in today because I'm not going to be charged in today. Not with a day like this. This is a day for literally staying in bed. Um, but the other thing we've got to be very careful about as well is our data because we're on a, a roaming plan here in the Republic. And we've only got so much data to use, about 20 gig between us. So everything just has to be managed a little bit. You just can't do willy-nilly what you want. You can't watch infinite YouTube because you burn your data up in one night if you do that. And I've got to be concise in my use of this and do exactly what I want to do. And no fooling around, no, no galling about the internet and Facebook groups and things like that. You go on, you do what you have to do, you get it done put the computer away, turn it off rather than suspend it because the charge lasts better. But it's all about power management and data management and all sorts of management like uh, water management. We've got to be careful to manage our water as well. <laughs> we don't want to run out of water in the middle of this. Um, and I think to a certain extent I'm also getting some journey management. Um, somebody asked me this morning, are you going north? And the answer is, I'd love to. We'd both like to go north, but with the constant battering we're getting of storm after storm after storm, I'm not too sure how viable going up the west coast is going to be. Um, we're going to wait and see if we can get the window. We want to go round, we want to do the base, and I think we're just going to have to assess it as we come. So it's just another form of management, things, that resources that have to be managed, and that includes the charge on this. So since this is up and running, I now have to do this instead of talking to you. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Well, because water supply is short and we've got to manage our water, one of the things we do is we rinse in salty water and because habit is so strong, what we do is we turn it off at the pump because then you can't get any water. Except, but... except for silly people like me. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Goodness, Beverly went and got the bucket of water to rinse everything off and then stood here. And I was like, what are you doing, Beth? <laughs> Rinsing it afresh. The stupidity is strong with this one, Master. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is why I basically took over because she kept on, you know, it's like I, I told her and then two seconds later she was doing it again. I, like, I know, oh. but it's hard to break a habit. It is, but it's... You know, if you've got to manage your water, Beverly, it's got to be a habit. You've got to break. I came up with a damn scheme. We know, but anyway, yeah, rinsing with salt water is what we're trying to learn to do, but clearly not working completely. Well, for Beverly and I, a lot of things happen while we're doing the washing up. And in this particular case, we made plans. So um, in a couple of days it's going to be a Sunday and um, 
it'll be Sunday the 10th, oh. maybe, whatever. Yeah, 10th of July, I think it is. 10th of July. So it'll be 10th of July. And I said to Beverly earlier, if we don't start going up the coast by the 14th... Whoa, sorry. Yeah, if we don't go up the coast by the 14th, we're done. So Sunday is our decision day. If it looks like really exciting, fantastic, we want to do it, trust me, we are going up that west coast. However, if it's another week of rubbish, we've been here a month for goodness sake, waiting for weather. If it's going to be more rubbish, we're going to just head back and we'll make other plans. But we'll hopefully carry on blogging because do you know what? This is what it's really like. It's none of this sun beaches and stuff like that. This is hard grit reality. In this part of the world. Yeah. If you want to sail this part of the world, this, this is, is what it's what like. It's like. Yeah. Um, just to point out, um, that I've got a vacant mind. <laughs> I swear it as we sway from side to side on our mooring anchor sorry because trust us it is horrible out there it is um what's it like over at the entrance oh uh we've got white caps and the waves are hitting the rocks at the uh, entrance it's huge swell isn't and it it's huge swell which is one of the reasons i wanted to because we were over at uh, shirkin i wanted to move this morning but I'm glad we did because, um, okay, fair enough, this is not as nice as the whole anchorage over there when it's nice. However, <laughs> I decide, we decided that this was the better of the two deals. This was our safer option. Yeah, and safety is always the highest priority. Well, it's the morning after the blow from the night before. Um, it's still blowing. We are expecting to get up to force eight again today. Uh, just being forward, check the anchor and make sure that everything's as it should be. And I'm glad to say that everything's looking good. The chain is lifting quite a bit, but we've got over 30 meters of it out, which gives us a scope somewhere between six to one and 10 to one, depending on the tide height here. This is quite a shallow area, but the bottom is a very heavy, thick, sticky mud. Um, in the past we've had great trouble getting the anchor out of the mud um, whenever we want to lift it and move. Water is getting a bit tight, we're down to our last 70 litres, we can make that last a couple of days. Um, the pontoon is currently closed because of the weather, but we're hoping that by tomorrow evening this will all have blown through and we can go in Sunday and get water and everything we need. But uh, there are huge breakers down at the entrance near the lighthouse. I estimate that they're somewhere between um, 8 to 16 metres in height, based on the height of the lighthouse near them. And um, I would not want to be down there. The boats that were damaged in the storm have been taken to a yard around the corner, and um, apparently there was also another boat here that was smashed to matchsticks yesterday somewhere, although everybody taken off by the RNLI. It has not been a particularly pleasant um, stop in our adventures. It's not Baltimore's fault, it's the weather. But I think we're fast running out of time. Uh, come Sunday, we're going to look at the weather for the week ahead. And if it's like this for the week ahead, I think we're done. We're running out of time here and it'll be easier just to run before this weather all the length of the uh, south coast and then get into the lee of the island on the east coast and go up the Irish Sea. Um, the plus side is that there's a harbour seal just off the thing, but it's too far away for this camera to pick up. But <laughs> he's busy looking at me and taking a sniff of the air. The anchor seems to be fine, so I'm going to go back inside and have my afternoon coffee. Well, we're back in Baltimore because there's going to be a few storms going on uh, in the next few days. In fact, the winds are already starting to rise, aren't they, Bev? This is the storm. Well, I know, but it is a storm. But um, it's 4-7 gusting it. Yeah, maybe it is the storm. 
Ne near gale to gale is the technical thing for 47 and 48. Right, fair enough. But, uh, but yeah, so um, we came in um, through the little gap above um, Shirkin Island. What I call the north entrance. The north entrance. And um, basically we were going through and we came in just after uh, low tide because um, we wanted the tide to be running in, didn't we, Bev? We did. We wanted to. We didn't want to fight the tide coming in here because it's a little narrow entrance. The tide will run strongly through it. Yeah. So. Um, Good neck. <laughs> yeah. A bit of a lean on today. Anyway, uh, we wanted to come through the north entrance, and um, it just meant that because we were coming in just after low tide, boy, we could see plenty of rocks. Mm. and plenty of shoreline but I think the most worrying section now Beverly was following my track mm. but we had just commented um, about 10-20 minutes earlier that we were looking at our chart plotter and how much it lags uh, but behind reality basically I, I, I passed uh, a fixed feature and the I could see it right beside me. I mean, we passed within 10 metres of it. When I looked at the chart, it was still about 50 to 60 metres in front of us on the chart. Now, I don't think they moved it. I think what happens is by the time the chart has figured out where it is, the boat has moved. Yes. Um, you know, because what you're relying on is um, your GPS signal going up to the satellite. No, that's not how it works. Okay. How it works is all the GPS satellites have atomic clocks in them and they broadcast the time, the exact time they broadcast it. When it arrives here, um, it looks at the times it's got from the various satellites. It knows roughly where each satellite is. Um, so it then does a little bit of mathematics to say if that satellite was that far away then um, and it broadcast at this time, then it must be precisely that distance. And it then basically does like a cocked hat sort of affair. Yeah. So it's got, it's got a lot of calculation to do. It does. Now, normally that doesn't take, and if you're not going that fast... If you're out at sea, 50 metres is neither here nor there. Neither here nor there, but in this little section... So we just commented on the fact that it was lagged. And then we were coming through the north entrance, and Bev was like, where's this north entrance? And I said, it's there, Bev! <laughs> yeah, because the point was that I had the boat on her track and when I looked at reality, we'd gone past where she'd done the turn because the chart plotter had finally figured out where it thought we were when it did the calculation, which was like 30, 40 metres behind us. So we had to do a quick U-turn and come round and go through. And to make it worse, the entrance we came through was the narrower of the two channels. The much wider channel was the one in front of me, which I thought I was going for. And, holy heaven. And as a good rule of thumb, if you've got a choice between a wider channel and a narrower channel, you generally take the wider. Yeah. Well, I do. Yeah. Those of you who are thrill seekers. <laughs> yeah, take the narrow channel. In this particular case, you needed the narrow channel. And because, of course, uh, we were coming in just after low tide, mm. it was even narrower than we... <laughs> it was even narrower again because you could see all the rocks. Yeah. So, um, anyway, regardless... Yeah, so we've we've come in here. We initially anchored over at Shirkin until the wind came round to the south southeast, which it wasn't supposed to do. It was supposed to stay in the southwest. So we legged it over here, dropped the anchor, and um, we're just here sitting at night now. Nothing more we can do. No, we'll just see what happens. It's very unnerving just to sit here in the middle of a four seven four eight and have the boat hunt around. And think you'd, you'd depend on a little cook <laughs> and a bit of chain. Yeah. But to be fair to Baltimore. When the, when the anchor digs into this place, I don't know what sort of mud it is other than thick and sticky, but... Plenty sticky, trust me on this. The anchor does seem to go down a heck of a distance because the last couple of times we've moved from this particular area, we've had a heck of a job getting the anchor back up again. Yeah, purely because um, the tripping line has been so useful because the thing is, it's such thick mud that we've needed the tripping line to actually yank the thing out. Yeah, so when, when we're lifting this anchor, we drive forward until the chain is absolutely above the anchor, quite taut. Then we just slowly push the boat forward a little bit, sort of levering the shaft of the anchor up. Um, but it's really hard to do, and it takes a bit of time. You've got to be very patient and do it slowly. 
but it's much much easier while you're doing that to reach over with the tripping line and give the head of the anchor a couple of good pulls and all of a sudden you can just feel it move and the chain goes slack and you know you've got it. Yeah. It, it just makes it easier. It takes the strain off all the anchoring gear. Yeah. But yeah, it seems to set really hard in here, doesn't it? It certainly does. But so uh, I'd say so far in my experience is the holding is excellent. Very excellent. <laughs> It'll need to be if this storm coming in. <laughs> well, no, no, the storm is here. Okay. This is it. Okay. There's no storm coming. You may not have noticed, but we're going backwards. I'm not backwards. We're going side to side, rocking around. Boats are all over the place. Nobody's outside. The storm is here now. It's not coming. Okay. God. This is a little situation update. In my last little vlog I said that we were going to wait till Sunday. It's now Saturday and Bab and I are done. Um, we're only on a mere 40 odd knots at the moment. It has gone up to 50 50 odd and um, we've got white caps in the bay um, when I anchored um, all the yachts were parallel to us but they're now behind us because of the way that the winds have changed both dressed um, so that if there's a situation or anything that happens we're ready straight away but no we're done we've it's just been it just feels like we're being battered I feel like a piece of metal in an anvil being bashed because that's what we're happening to us um, you know it's just dire I have to say though, the anchor tackle is doing a fantastic job and we have got a beautiful arch and that's all I'm looking at is this wonderful arch because that is so reassuring. <laughs> 